Hi, and welcome to another class. Today, we'll be looking at diffusion. The content to be presented is in line with the new syllabus that is effective for May-June examination. That's for the human and social biology in the CSEC examination. Today's task we're going to be looking at passive transport, diffusion. We are going to differ on osmosis for this lesson. We're definitely going to be comparing osmosis and diffusion in the lesson that will follow. We are going to identify examples of diffusion uh, in animals and plants. We are also going to be explaining the importance of passive transport in organisms. Let's move right into the lesson. Now, passive transport is the movement of molecules along a concentration gradient. What that means is from a high concentration to a low concentration. Uh, one might say where there's a lot of the particle to a place where there is less of that particle. The process is so simple, no energy from the cell is required. It is like rolling a ball down a hill. No energy is required to get that done. Now, the beauty about passive transport is that there are really two types of passive transport that we're going to be looking at in our lesson. We're going to be looking at diffusion and, of course, osmosis, which, is, which itself is a special type of diffusion. Before we could move on, it's very important for those persons who are still not here for us to define the term solute. Now, a solute, this is a substance to be dissolved. Whatever you want to dissolve, that is going to be the substance. For those persons who are familiar with uh, sugar, or, or for example, we could use table salt, if you were supposed to dissolve the sugar, in water or the table salt in water then the sugar would have been the solute or the table salt would have been the solute the sugar and the salt would represent the content to be dissolved hence that's the solute now the medium that will dissolve the solute is referred to as the solvent so as is the case for our sugar and water the solvent would have been water so there we have it for solute, it is that which is to be dissolved. For solvent, it is that medium that will dissolve the solute. And we gave the example of the sugar and water. But very important, we need to look at concentration. Now, the concentration refers to the amount of a solute that is dissolved in the solvent. So in this case, we'll be looking at the amount of sugar that is dissolved in in the water but we still need to go a little further we need to look at gradient now i don't know where you're from but gradient um simply put is a difference in concentration between high and low so the difference in concentration between high and low where there's a lot of the particles versus a small number of the particles that represents our concentration gradient now for some persons you might have heard the term a grade or a ill or that type of a thing an incline so here we have a little triangle showing a slope and at the top we have high here we have low so between this this these two areas between high and low is where we would find our concentration gradient. And as we nicely put it earlier, we said it's a difference between high and low. That is what really gives us the concentration gradient. But to make it very, very simple, it's really from a place where we have a lot of the particles to a place where we have less of the particles. So for example, if we're looking at using a cologne, some fragrance, just where you would have sprayed that fragrance would be the area where you have high concentration. But this fragrance would move from where it was sprayed and it would pretty much be diffusing to other areas. And of course, the other areas that it is going would have been considered to be the area of low concentration. Now, here we look at 
passive transport. And passive transport, simply put, as we said, it is like rolling a ball down a hill. So here we have an incline, a little ditch. So you'll observe at the top here, look at my cursor, at the top here we would have pretty much a particles in high concentration. So I'm getting down to the bottom here would have been down the concentration gradient. So what you'd find is that this ball rolling down from high concentration to low concentration is pretty much the best analogy I could think of for passive transport. It is pretty much just moving substances from one concentration to another without using any energy from the cell. So the key thing here with passive transport is that no energy is required for passive transport to take place. Now we'd stop right at that yellow line and as soon as we move into the lesson, we'll look at what happens beyond this line. In this area, in another lesson, we'll talk about what happens here. Now diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of particles from a place of high concentration to a place of low concentration. And we did give somewhat similar uh, definition for passive transport. Now, what really causes diffusion? Now, diffusion is caused by the concentration gradient that exists between high and low. So if you were supposed to look at the lungs, when there's a high concentration of carbon dioxide on the inside, then oxygen would try to get itself on the inside while carbon dioxide would try to get itself on the outside and they would have movement of um, both gases, uh, oxygen going in, carbon dioxide coming out, and there we have diffusion taking place. Or if we were thinking about cooking, and we were cooking something really nice and it's really... It's really sumptuous and someone can smell it from next door. Now the high concentration would have been where you are cooking and of course the low concentration would be by the neighbor's premises. So there we have it. Diffusion is pretty much a movement of particles from a place of high concentration to a place of low concentration. And of course this happens along a concentration gradient where there is more particles at one place and there is definitely less particles at another place. So we say from high to low. But the big question, why is diffusion important? Now the first thing we could say about diffusion is that diffusion is important to sustain life. Without diffusion there wouldn't be any life. Now, let's look at respiration. Now, respiration is driven by diffusion. Oxygen diffuses into the blood as there is a concentration gradient created by the process of respiration between oxygen and carbon dioxide. So, as such, we have the movement from high concentration where oxygen is in high concentration on the outside uh, of the, on the outside of the blood vessel and then we have a high concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood and then we have this movement from high to low and from high to low again so oxygen coming in from high to low into the bloodstream while carbon dioxide leaving the bloodstream from high to low outside of the bloodstream. Then we have absorption taking place. Absorption. Now diffusion is also important in absorption. Now some nutrients which are made available from the process of digestion, example glucose and amino acid. Remember that glucose is, that sm is the smallest part of, of course, starch, of carbohydrate. Now Amino acid, too, is the smallest part of protein. Now, we're saying during absorption, some of the nutrients which are made available from digestion, example, glucose and amino acid, are able to diffuse quickly across the capillary walls into the blood. Now, this process is because of a concentration gradient that is created in the blood you'd understand that we're using this glucose and we are using this this amino acid so as such there's always need for more so it creates a concentration gradient where there's always going to be one area that has more glucose and more amino acid than the other area hence diffusion has to take place in order to move these things along then we have excretion 
Diffusion is important in excretion. Now, the removal of carbon dioxide produced during respiration is made possible by diffusion. So we could think about our fifth point, having looked at four, we could think that diffusion is important to help to maintain that constant internal environment. So diffusion is really, really important in ensuring that we maintain that constant, that balanced internal environment in order to sustain life. Now, we couldn't go anywhere without talking about plants. Diffusion is also important in plants for the process of photosynthesis to take place. Now, diffusion facilitates the movement of carbon dioxide into the plant via the stomata. Then we would have diffusion taking place there. Then it is also true that diffusion ensures the removal of oxygen that is not needed by the plant so during the process of photosynthesis that extra oxygen that is made it is removed from the plant by the process of diffusion now i topped in some more stuff in the blue writing here as we're looking at human and social biology and we are also looking at biology now we are looking at the impact of diffusion on our on us, on the environment, and on other organisms. For example, there are organisms that depend on diffusion to find food. As animals search for food in the forest, the scent of a food diffuses through the air. Now, this reduces the time the animal has to spend searching for food. Think about if you are in the forest, and probably, I don't know if you know the fruit that is called a subasap. Now, when it's ripe, it really gives off its wonderful fragrance. It would be very easy to find that tree. If you can think about the jackfruit or the mango or whatever fruit in your locality that gives off a nice fragrance when it is ripe or when it is ready to be harvested, then you'd understand once that fragrance is out there in the air, it would be diffusing and of course it would be attracting organism to it. Then we think about finding meat. Now, the scent of the pheromone diffuses through the air and responding meat follow the scent. It's now following a concentration gradient where the scent is pretty much in a low concentration and they will move in an area where it is in high concentration in order to find the meat. Now, we could think about escaping predator. This is the opposite where an organism would move away from an area where there is high concentration of that pheromone, of that scent, of the predator, to an area where the concentration is less so as to stay alive, so as to protect itself. Now, this blue writing is not so much covered under the syllabus, but it is very important for you to know and for persons who are doing diffusion and is looking at diffusion outside of this syllabus. We have added this for you. Now, danger. Diffusion alerts us to danger. Think about a gas leak. If there was a gas leak and you were not alerted, then can you imagine what could likely happen if we were supposed to like have a fire that is associated with that gas leak? Or think about carbon monoxide poisoning. When we have blackout, we're having inclement weather now, and the light goes, and we have to turn on that generator, and we're not knowledgeable of diffusion. We don't know that the particle, the carbon monoxide from the exhaust, it will diffuse into the house. And because we're not knowledgeable, diffusion is taking place. And if, if we don't respond early, then the carbon monoxide might poison us and might cause death. So we have to be knowledgeable of diffusion because diffusion enhances life. Diffusion could help us to stay alive. Diffusion could help us to find food, meat, and of course, it maintains a constant internal environment so as to ensure that we stay alive. So the endowing understanding here is that diffusion facilitates life. Diffusion ensures that a constant internal environment is maintained. 
Diffusion ensure that we are protected. Diffusion ensures that in some cases organisms can find mates. Diffusion ensure that in some cases organism can escape predator. Diffusion is also important because with a knowledge of diffusion you will understand clearly how to apply and how to use some chemicals. Let's move on. Now the knowledge of diffusion understanding that the particle size the concentration and temperature including wind speed all these are factors that impact diffusion so the farmer has to be cognizant of the fact that the temperature could cause a pesticide to spread faster and fur and much further than it would have spread had it been a cool part of the day now the amount that you use the concentration the farmer has to be very careful and ensure that he's following the the recommended concentration for the mix or else that too could cause diffusion to take place fast and reaching a wider audience so to speak now the particle size now if a particle are small and light they will diffuse faster if they are heavy and they are large, then the rate of diffusion will be much slower. Now, if you check our video on diffusion, where we compare the temperature of three, of three specimens, you will realize that in that experiment, the temperature of about 89 degrees Celsius, diffusion took place in it way, way faster than it did in the other containers wind speed could also increase the rate of diffusion so we have to be very careful when we are working with chemicals that are able to diffuse easily because of our knowledge of diffusion we must also take precaution in wearing safety gears you need to have a muff if you are dealing with certain chemicals because diffusion is active and it is always happening so you want to ensure it doesn't require any energy so you want to ensure that you are protected from all harm all right so this is going to bring us to the end of our lesson on diffusion we do hope that we answered your why your what your which your where and your when with that said we want you to tell us in the comment section what is diffusion in our next lesson we are going to be looking at osmosis as a type of diffusion where a membrane is a part of a process until next time what good